Hello again, Hungarian algorithm, just having a quick look at why it works. So if you're watching this, you've just done my video on how to do the Hungarian algorithm. And our aim is to determine the best assignment of the employee to the task to get minimum time. And the first thing we do is we subtract the lowest value in each row from every value in that row. So let's have a closer look at what we're doing. Wendy could do A at 30, B at 40, C at 50, or D at 60. So when we subtract 30 from each of these, what we're saying is that she could do A, B would take her 10 minutes longer. So the relative cost of B compared to A is 10 minutes. C would take her 20 minutes longer, D would take her 30 minutes longer. So by subtracting the same value from everything here, or here, to get this, we haven't actually changed the cost of, when, or the overall relative cost of Wendy doing something. A is still the cheapest for Wendy, followed by B, and then C, and then D. So our aim in doing this is to get a relative zero cost option for each machine based on reducing complexity. So once we've gone through and done that, our lines is are used to check, can we allocate a person to a machine with a relative zero cost? And by saying, can, do we have to put four lines through it? We're saying pretty much, do we have enough zeros? Because this line here goes through two zeros, it's showing us that so far, yes, we've got a cheapest option for Wendy and a cheapest option for Zelda, but they're both machine A. They can't both do machine A, and we don't have a cheapest option for machine C. But it's not just as simple as having one zero in every column either, because we could, could still have a double up in a row, like two might be cheapest for Xenophon. See, these are the same cost for Xenophon here, for example. So the lines lets us make sure that when we need a minimum of four lines, we've got enough zeros that every person can be paired with a machine with a relative cost of zero. So first we checked to compare or re reduce complexity for each person's cost. If that doesn't give us enough reduction of mess in here, we're now going to look at any columns and see, well, do we need to reduce complexity here? This column doesn't have a zero. So basically we're saying, well, for machine C, Xenophon's the cheapest. If we take Xenophon down to zero, how much more would Wendy, Yolanda, and Zelda need in terms of time? Wendy needs 10 minutes more than Xenophon to do the work at task C or machine C. So that's why we're subtracting down the columns. But as you see, we ended up with that problem where sure, every row and every column has a zero, but we've got too many double ups. Machine A has a double up and machine and Xenophon's got two that he could be doing. B and C only have a minimum for Xenophon and that's not enough. Somebody else has to be able to take a minimum. We've got to get more zeros in there. Now step five, I've got to admit, does get a little bit tricky. And it's partly tricky to understand because we've simplified step five a lot. What's actually happening in step five, which I've got to look up, is for every non-lined row, so these two, we're subtracting the minimum because that'll get us another zero in those rows. And for 
every lined column, we're adding the minimum. Now, what that all adds up to is these two things happen. So I've done a little sort of diagram here where I did it and I subtracted the minimum on the purple ones. And it was all very complicated. And in fact, I think I put the rows and columns in different spaces there because it is okay, you know, um, this line could have been a line that way. So step five is really quite hard to work out why we're doing it. But our aim is to get more zeros. And this method that has, happens here makes sure that we get more zeros, but we don't go into the negative. And that's what's happening with that. I'm not going to go into a full explanation of exactly how that works mathematically, but if you're interested, check in with me in class and we'll do that. The whole aim is get enough zeros that we can allocate to everyone. So now you see our problem that we had where B and C only had minima for Xenophon. Now, Wendy can take on B and C as well. There's actually no extra real cost there compared to Wendy doing A. And we've got enough zeros that everyone can get allocated to a task that's a relative zero cost. And by relative zero, it means it's the absolute best use of time. We couldn't have got any less time happening here.